I think we have some new folks for, for anybody who's new. I'm Anne Marie Bro. I'm one of the product owners um, for Folio. And we have these sprint reviews every uh, two sprints, we try to have them. And it's a chance for the individual development teams to show uh, some of the new functionality that they've been working on. Um, we do not list the names of all of the team members anymore in the slide deck because it was getting to be kind of enormous. But most of the development teams have sites on the wiki where you can see a list of the members and uh, things like their definition of done, um, maybe details of spikes that they've been working on, et cetera. Um, so we have links to all of those. And the link to the slide deck will be in the um, comments, the description of the video once it's posted on YouTube in a couple of days. Um, links again to the membership and the all important matrix that kind of keeps us organized as far as which team is working on which modules and which modules are poor or complete and the product owners and, that are uh, responsible for each of the modules. Um, crazy times right now, but then again, it pretty much always seems like crazy times. Um, since our last uh, gathering, we've had a couple of hotfix releases for Juniper, and we are chugging toward a third one. Um, not sure what the date for the third one will be yet, but we definitely have, um, I, I think, 10 or 12 um, uh, tickets that are um, under consideration for hotfix release. And I expect we probably will have a few more. We have a number of libraries that are just now migrating onto Juniper from Iris. And so little things are being found here and there. Um, big important dates in Kiwi time. We uh, just went through development fees for platform core and platform complete. We have mostly not yet um, had releases, but we're getting ready for doing releases. And new modules that were not in Folio previously, we, we had a pre-release deadline of Friday so that um, we could start making plans to include them into, into Folio. And just a reminder that uh, there'll be a link for this sprint review. Um, in the Kiwi section of the wiki, just like we have a link for the last one. So in the deck, we won't spend a whole lot of time on it in the meeting, but highlights of the last two sprints for each of the development teams. Um, there's been a lot of work uh, kind of getting ready to finish up the Kiwi work and get ready to start to release it all. And the most important and the most interesting part are the demos. So we have a number of folks who are demoing. Um, I know Magda's can't be here today. Um, so um, I think she's all set with her teams, but if any issues, folks just speak up. But we're gonna start with Thunderjet acquisitions and Andre. Thanks, Anne Marie. Uh, hi everyone, let me share my screen. I believe you can see it. So, um, yep. thank you. I'm going to demonstrate uh, two features uh, our team was working uh, on during last uh, sprints. Um, so we continue working on updating receiving flow. And uh, now I'm ready to demo the user's ability to change piece uh, quantity in the receiving app. Uh, so uh, even if it was uh, created automatically, uh, when uh, or when uh, open orders. So we're now we in receiving. Let's find our title. And uh, here we can see that uh, manually add pieces for receiving uh, in uh, 
PLN was wasn't checked. So previously uh, we can't do anything with uh, pieces uh, like uh, add or remove it. But now it's possible. But uh, one thing for user, it's uh, warning honor with uh, warning text. Uh, so if we add it, it's successfully saved. So we can edit it and uh, delete uh, if needed. Uh, it's uh, the first one and the next is uh, it's uh, pagination for all acquisitions list uh, such as invoices receiving orders for the lines uh, all tabs in uh, finance app and uh, organizations so for example let's see how it works uh, in receiving so let's select Some filters and see that uh, here we have uh, 137 records uh, and uh, we can navigate uh, uh, through the pages uh, with uh, buttons next and previous. So if we click next, uh, we see the second portion of titles and let's scroll to the bottom, select the last title, go to edit screen and uh, go back to uh, title details and the list. So here we can see that uh, we're still uh, on the second page and uh, still uh, at the bottom of the uh, our list, so now we save uh, the position for users, and that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. Um, we're getting deeper and deeper into receiving now that we've got orders and and invoices in in good shape. All right, I've lost my list. Um, Firebird, okay. Um, looks like that Vladisov is first. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so let me share my screen. Mm. Uh, my task was related to a transformation field uh, that when we fill one of the inputs, the all placeholders should remove should be removed. And as you can see, it's work as expected. Uh, that's all probably that was included in the scope of the task. Uh, what else I can say? Uh, if anyone have questions, you can ask. What's well, a handy little fix. So thank you for that. And uh, the first Alexander of the day. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, I hope you see my screen. Yes, uh, that's good. I'm going to show you a functionality from the mod data export module. Uh, when uh, files uh, which are used for the export uh, contain invalid data. For example, as you can see here, uh, we have two CSV files. Uh, first file contain uh, just UUIDs, uh, but uh, uh, those UUIDs cannot be found uh, neither in uh, inventory nor in uh, SRS. And uh, the second one, we have a file just with uh, invalid or cor corrupted date. So um, uh, before that, um, uh, the job triggered with uh, those files uh, stayed in status new and uh, didn't fail. But now if we uh, select first file, select the full job profile and run. 
here you can see a uh, fail because uh, UID is not found and invalid export file definition. And uh, if we choose uh, the next one, open the full job profile, run, we also see the job uh, failed and uh, explanation or error while reading date input file. Uh, so everything uh, is working as expected for now. That's all from my side. If you have any questions, please feel free. Yay, thank you, Sasha. One thing that I think this got fixed already, but I, I just wanted to double check. It used to be when, when jobs failed or were stopped, they would keep staying at the top of the list of the logs. Um, has, did that get fixed so that they just go down the list, um, you know, wherever they belong? Or did that question make sense? Uh, so uh, do you mean whether, uh, to, uh, for example, uh, this to fail job uh, stays, stay uh, at the top of the... Right, they, they used to keep updating with the current date and time, so they would always end up staying at the top of the list. But I think that was a little glitch that got fixed previously. But um, never mind. I'll check in with Magda later about it. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's see. I'll heard, and I'm not going to even try your last name. <laughs> Nestor Nestorakov. Yeah. As yeah, let me turn my screen. Yes. Um, our team, uh, we added uh, a new argument for resumption token as expiration date. And let me see how it works. Uh, we choose a uh, prefix for our uh, request and uh, well, we send request. We see it again. And we can see that now we have expiration date time, uh, now a resumption token. If we um, check, we can check it. And if we decode our resumption token, we can see that we have now expiration date as expected. And also we can um, Continue our request, and we have another token which was created. And also, we can use a uh, token with the date which was expired, and we can use it. Send a request, and we can see that now we have a uh, handle message. Uh, error message, the value of the resumption token argument is expired. And also we can see that expiration date is really expired. And this time it's not really expected. And it's all from my side, thank you. That looks good, thank you. And Ilya. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so uh, we have corrected uh, the work of that export model and uh, previously um, uh, uh, if uh, in the system uh, we uh, uh, we had uh, more than uh, 200 entities of uh, some uh, particular references of data type, like uh, campus, library, institutions, and etc. Uh, that expert uh, emitted uh, some data, and uh, uh, now we can ensure that uh, it uh, the, the, the expert uh, doesn't emit any data anymore. So uh, in advance, uh, I created. Uh, 
uh, at snapshot environment uh, 2.500 uh, locations and uh, let me show them quickly uh, so yes uh, here we see uh, a lot of locations as well i created uh, locations with uh, uh, several z characters at the beginning and uh, i did it uh, in order to have uh, these locations be appeared at the end of the uh, locations list request just to ensure that the data expert uh, handles uh, all entities not only first 200 uh, so uh, let's uh, move to inventory and uh, here you can see that uh, I choose this instance and I, I added holding to it with uh, these locations. So uh, let's show it. Okay, so here we see that I added to for permanent and temporary location uh, these two locations. So uh, let's grab the inventory UID. I mean, uh, instance UID. And uh, let's update the CSV file uh, that we will be used, that we are going to use for export. Oh, I already have this instance here, instance ID. So uh, as well, I created um, a mapping profile, uh, which uh, contain uh, uh, transformations for mapping uh, uh, locations fields. So uh, let's export our record uh, using CSV file and uh, our uh, preliminary created uh, mapping profile. Let's wait a bit. So uh, export uh, uh, have been completed. Let's download the file. Let's copy the content and uh, let's translate it to mark record. So here we can see that uh, all the locations uh, was uh, mapped to the outcome mark record. And here we can see uh, the uh, our location. So I think that's it. Thank you. So, all right, let me just see if I can say this mm -hmm. back to you. So in you have three 777 seven, seven fields. The yep. first one has two subfields because it had a temporary and a permanent location. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. And prior to this, we would have gotten the annex and the main library, but we would not have gotten the ZZZ because there were it was one of more than 200 locations. It was after the 200th location. Is that right? Um, uh, I, I didn't catch you. So, uh, do you mean that, um, uh, so, can you please explain it again? Sure. So prior to this, if there were more than mm -hmm. 200 locations and the ZZZ was like the 205th location, mm -hmm. we would have gotten annex and main library, but we would not have gotten the ZZZ in the export. Is that right? Uh, yeah, no, it's not right. We will got them already. It uh, was it was uh, previously we uh, didn't receive them. Okay. But for now, uh, uh, export uh, doesn't emit uh, any reference data like locations, and it will include uh, any of them that are presented in the system to the export. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's really tricky with some of these where we don't have as big data in kind of the hosted reference environments and then you get to real life and you find a library with 500 locations. So, all right, that looks good. Thank you. All right, for Spitfire, Kalila. Hello everyone. Um, so I'm just gonna introduce and then hand it off to, to Dennis. So um, Dennis is gonna show or demo uh, um, the work that we've done in regards to supporting Mark Holdings and Folio. So he's going to show how we are you're able to view a Mark Holdings record and in some of the work we've done in regards to editing a Mark Holdings record via um, QuickMark. And I think he'll show a few other things too. Uh, so Dennis, take it away. 
Thank you, Kalila. Um, let me share my screen. Yep. So, do you see it? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show um, Mark Holdings. Uh, so let's, um, I think, let's go to this instance that's uh, contained it. So you can see that we have uh, an instance with two um, holding rec or holdings uh, records. And uh, you can see that uh, if uh, we have a hold uh, Mark Holdings record, you can see the source here contains Mark. And uh, that gives you a few more uh, things you can do with this record. So you can um, edit this in quick mark uh, and uh, you can view uh, mark source of this record. So this is uh, like similar to what we have with um, um, uh, mark web records. Um, so let's go to, I think, view source first. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty much the same. You can see uh, the source of the records, all the fields that uh, are contained with this uh, record and uh, values. Yeah, so this is pretty much the same view. So let's go back and uh, try to edit this um, record. Um, yeah, so. We also have uh, the same view as for Mark Bip, uh, but uh, uh, some rules are different uh, for um, for Mark Holdings records. Um, so, for example, we have a different editable positions for the leader field. Uh, for example, uh, we cannot edit, um, or we can only edit uh, positions five, six, seventeen, and eighteen, if I'm not mistaken. So we can't edit edit. Um, any different fields. So uh, let me try and uh, edit some other position. Yeah, you can see that um, we have an error message saying that only uh, 5, 6, 7, and 18 can be edited. Um, okay, and um, let's try doing something different. Uh, maybe add uh, a different uh, subfield to 852 field. So let's try and edit. Uh, um, case of field and uh, adding a prefix, um, save and close. And we should see, yeah, we can see that uh, we, on, we now have um, updated uh, call number prefix uh, field and it displays a new value now. Um, yeah. And I also want to add that um, currently we're still working on um, um, disabling um, disabling some of the fields uh, when editing Mark Holdings records. So the fields that are mapped to uh, Mark records will be disabled. Uh, for now, we can still um, edit them, but uh, we'll change that soon. Um, yeah, and we also have. Um, some tickets uh, to work on to make some changes to 004 fields and uh, 852 fields. Yeah, so um, we'll address those uh, changes also. Um, yeah, so the next thing I want to show is um, I think let's uh, let's uh, try and move uh, the uh, holdings records. Uh, so you can see that. Uh, I still have the move holding segments to another instance. And if we, if we click that, um, uh, the flow is uh, the same as um, currently with uh, just uh, regular uh, folio holdings records. So let me uh, choose another instance record. For example, this one. Mm, yeah, and uh, they do pretty much the same. Uh, but it, it works the same for Mark Holdings records. So you can uh, choose move to and select another uh, instance, continue. And uh, yeah, so mm, this Mark uh, or Holdings records now um, uh, has been moved to uh, this instance record. Um, and uh, let's uh, try to maybe 
add an item. Uh, so I can show you that. Oh, missed. I can show you that um, if we go to view holdings, uh, oh, something. Mm -hmm. I don't know for some reason. So we shouldn't be able to delete uh, this um, holding uh, record if uh, we have a single item attached. Oh yeah, we yeah we have uh, this uh, message appear. So because we have uh, a single item attached, we can we cannot delete this record. But if we um, go and uh, remove this item. and try deleting the mark holdings record again. Uh, we can now have uh, option to delete. And uh, yeah, so this record has been deleted. Um, yeah, and uh, I think uh, I think that's probably all that I wanted to demo today. Yeah, so if you have any questions, please uh, ask them. I'll be happy to answer. I think you're the star of the demo so far. and. We were asking some questions in chat with Kalila. Oh. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's great to see the Mark Holdings uh, work starting to come to life and looks really good. Um, I, I'll just say from the data import point of view, we're, we're trying to keep the, um, the work for Mark Holdings and inventory holdings um, as parallel as possible to the work that we did for Mark bibliographic records and inventory instances. So we've had a lot of information sharing between Spitfire and Folijet and trying to keep everything um, as um, parallel as possible so that it's not confusing for the users. But it looks great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, on to Vega, Roman. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm sharing my screen. Not quite yet. Can you see it now? No, not yet. Oh, it's coming. All right, we got it. Um, you see uh, the browser with Folio, right? Yes, we see Roman Baranek as a <laughs> yeah, user. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. So I'm going to demo some uh, small feature. It's uh, saving initial contributors field in Fifine uh, during Fifine creation. Uh, when Fifine uh, record is for first uh, created. Uh, the contributors should be saved with uh, the other item date on the Fifine record. Uh, it allows to have a complete historical view of the item when uh, the Fifine record was built. Uh, let me demonstrate uh, how it works. I already created uh, an instance with contributor field uh, test first name and test uh, last name uh, for this instance. And I'm going to create uh, a manual, uh, manual fee uh, for this user. Let's do it. Uh, with reference to the, uh, to the item in an instance, uh, in the instance which I uh, created before. Uh, let's check the details for this fee. Uh, the contributors are test first name and test last name. Now I'll go to the instance and update uh, the contributors. Let's go to inventory, item material type book. Uh, 
uh, contributors test instance. Edit. And let's update the existing uh, contributor and create uh, a new one. And now let's go to the users and refresh uh, the Fifine information page for this user. Uh, there is uh, still the initial contributor and the uh, contributors uh, have not been changed for this fee. Uh, that's all that I wanted to show. Thank you. Looks good. Thank you very much, Roman. All right, um, next is Falcon with Pavel. Hello, I want to share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. Yes. Yeah, it should be possible, right? Uh, so for the story I want to present is searching by old field values. Uh, currently, we implemented this option SQL.old, uh, uh, which allows uh, for users and librarians to search across all the field values that are included in the initial instance resource. It would be fields from, uh, from instance uh, related uh, items and holdings. Uh, Excluding the fields for now, it's all fields ending with ID and IDs uh, with the uppercase. For example, I'm showing that uh, I'm able to see results using uh, keyword book. Uh, as also available uh, search options is double equal, which uh, translates for multi-language fields as phrase match for other for keyword fields. Like if you want to exact match, it would be exact match. And other terms like keyword any, sorry, uh, any, all, and other will work too. So it's the same behavior as before for all search field values. Also, I will show that we uh, also do have three options to search across all only all instance field. This will be SQL.all instances. As you can see the result. Uh, also, there is an option to search across the all items fields. For example, I'm showing the search for the barcode field value. And for example, we can try to search uh, about the status value. Uh, it would be an item with status available. Uh, the same works for the search query. Uh, it would be search some SQL.all holdings. And for now, we try to search with holdings hash read value, this one. I guess that's me. Thank you. So this is searching across all the records and in inventory. Um, yes. Okay. All, all the records and all the field values okay. uh, for the search option. But for now, there is one uh, case I want to mention. It uh, only enabled it if as a uh, DevOps team provided this option with MC value for, uh, for the environment variable. So it's not available for the snapshot and other environments. It should be configured manually. But we are try considering to improve this behavior and add to then a specific configuration uh, option. All right, that looks good. We're, we're all starting to try to get used to the new um, inventory searching. So it's good to see this as well. And my old friend, Alexei Kuzminov. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so uh, let me share my screen. Can you see it? Charlotte, did you want to say something? Okay, I think no. Okay, uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, nice. Uh, so uh, for now we have um, uh, possibility to search uh, holdings uh, uh, instances and uh, 
uh, by holding a full call number, but we also added um, possibility to search by normalized call numbers for holdings and uh, for items uh, as well. So it means that uh, if you want to search uh, by call number, we don't need uh, to know uh, exactly value of call number. So I prepared an um, instance with two holdings and items. And um, as we can see, we have a um, uh, call number that contains some uh, specific symbols uh, like dots. Uh, so we can uh, uh, search uh, uh, by this call number without uh, any symbols. Also, we can uh, search by the part of this call number. So yeah, we can find this uh, instance for contest with uh, related holdings. Uh, and um, also we can start uh, we, we can search uh, uh, by uh, uh, prefix uh, and it also we can find this uh, value and um, uh, uh, to, together with uh, by uh, prefix and uh, call number. Uh, also, it uh, means that we uh, exclude uh, white spaces, specific symbols, so uh, we can uh, search by something like this query. Uh, and um, but uh, uh, important part that we can uh, search by the part of the prefix, so it's uh, rare books and the rest of uh, call number. So uh, yeah. So we can find and uh, the same behavior works for items uh, uh, items uh, normalized call number so let's try it uh, so we have a uh, uh, item with very uh, complex uh, call number and we don't need uh, to know uh, exactly value we can just uh, uh, try to search by the part without uh, uh, without some uh, symbols and also it um, works uh, with ignore it is a search uh, with ignore case so it's done. it does not matter upper or lower case we try uh, to use in our search query so this uh, additional search uh, um, uh, fields are described in our GitHub documentation. Uh, so I believe that's it from my side. Thank you. That looks great. Um, and I was just asking Charlotte if it was in the UI and back end, and she said just the back end now. My understanding is there's a whole bunch of work that's going to be done on inventory UI and searching. So hopefully it'll come there. Yeah, and that's correct. All the work we have paused uh, back in autumn, UXPRO 27, 12. Now that has been unblocked and we can pick up and implement it. Uh, yeah, step by step. But uh, this is looking got good. Thank you so much. Yeah. and. Um, uh, I think Charlotte, you said you were going to update the wiki documentation on searching also. Uh, yep, which we will have be great. Uh, we have a wiki uh, in the tips and trick page right. already describing right. uh, what is in the UI, uh, but uh, that we will um, update uh, accordingly with new implementation in the UI. Great, thank you so much. It's really good to see it getting more um, powerful. So true. <laughs> All right. And then we come to my team, Folajet. And so again, um, like Khalil, I'm just going to do a quick introduction. So Maria is one of our UI developers. And she, we have not really done much in the way of UI feature development 
in um, Kiwi because we've been focusing on a lot of internal stuff, um, but we've made a, a tweak that I find particularly handy when I'm doing imports. And then Sergey um, is going to show um, a change that we've made to support some of the new item statuses that were added, I think in Juniper, um, that we needed to uh, do some um, logic around to make sure that we were um, allowing them or disallowing them appropriately. So Masha. Yeah, hello everybody. I'm sharing my screen. I hope you can see it. Yes. Great. So I'm going to demo our updates on the <clears throat> job summary page. And firstly, we updated the link to the uh, logs page. So now a user should uh, click on the title hot link to get to the log page instead of clicking on the whole row. And it works like this. Mm -hmm. Let's wait some time. Okay, here we are. Uh, secondly, we made uh, such uh, statuses as created and updated for inventory records types uh, clickable. So now it's a hot link and uh, we can get to the relevant uh, inventory record type by clicking on the status. For example, here we have information for uh, inventory instance records and the most lively I hope uh, is a hot link for the item uh, so it allows us to get item information very like fast and easy and the same behavior is for the updated status so it works the same and I think that's it from me if you have any questions please ask not questions, just joy that being able to get straight to the holdings or straight to the item that was just created or updated is delightful for me and saves a bunch of clicks in inventory. All right. And Sergey. Let me share my screen, please. Uh, let me introduce uh, our new feature, uh, which was uh, um, uh, designed uh, by the uh, Fujit team. Uh, it allows the uh, user to update uh, item statuses uh, while in import uh, MarkBip uh, records. Uh, so uh, here we uh, have uh, <clears throat> two scenarios. Uh, the first one, uh, if uh, uh, our item uh, uh, has uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, statuses uh, and uh, initial item has uh, such kind of statuses and uh, we are trying to uh, update item while import operation. Uh, after that, uh, uh, this status will be updated and all fields, required fields also will be updated. Uh, the second scenario is uh, uh, another status uh, which uh, doesn't allow to uh, to uh, update uh, item statuses. Uh, if uh, initial uh, item has uh, such kind of uh, statuses, and we are trying to update uh, such uh, such uh, item uh, while uh, import operation. Uh, in this case, um, our system uh, will uh, provide error uh, with the messaging that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, item with uh, this kind of uh, status uh, cannot be uh, updated to another status, uh, but uh, all required fields uh, will be updated to uh, requested values. Um, uh, now, uh, to uh, represent uh, uh, these uh, two scenarios, uh, I already prepared. Um, I already prepared um, uh, a field mapping profile. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, it looks like uh, the following. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, profile 
will have uh, to get uh, to get uh, item with a material type like book uh, and uh, permanently on type like can uh, circulate and uh, status uh, status like uh, available. Uh, the, the next, uh, the next uh, uh, mapping profile uh, is uh, uh, is uh, top date, uh, but uh, here also uh, you can see uh, um, you can see uh, statuses uh, which uh, which were added uh, and uh, can be used by uh, uh, can be used by uh, our users. Just a second, please. I cannot, uh, I cannot hide this one of the top on the top. Oh, when you're um, when you're sharing, sometimes the tab gets in the way. Yeah. We'll do it like this. Okay. Uh, so uh, here uh, I can uh, I'd like to show you uh, my pin uh, my pin profiles uh, for update uh, for update uh, uh, our item, and uh, in this uh, case. Uh, uh, our material type uh, will be uh, will be updated from book to text. Uh, also, uh, also permanent learn type will be uh, updated to reading room, and uh, status uh, will be updated to long mission. Now let's uh, um, also I uh, uh, imported uh, imported um, uh, two uh, uh, two records. Uh, to update them, and now let's uh, let's try to fulfill the uh, the first uh, the first uh, scenario. Also, uh, I would like to mention that uh, this uh, that this uh, um, uh, update uh, will be made, uh, matched uh, uh, according to a field uh, a number uh, nine zero one, uh, and uh, yeah, and. Uh, uh, and uh, its value, its uh, value of our our human readable ID. Let's try to update our first uh, first uh, item. Let's uh, choose uh, our uh, job profile and run it. So now, now, uh, now we have our item uh, 60, uh, 68, and uh, we can see that uh, um, its uh, its uh, status is available uh, and the material type like book. Uh, let's uh, check the status of our update. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, completed, and uh, let's uh, let's uh, update. Data our page with our items to to see uh, if uh, uh, finally the item was updated. Uh, so uh, here we can see that uh, <clears throat> we work with uh, this uh, kind of ID. Uh, also, our material type was uh, was updated to text. Uh, permanent learn type was uh, updated to reading a room, and the item status was uh, updated to long mission. Uh, so uh, this uh, scenario is uh, work. Uh, now let's uh, let's uh, uh, proceed with uh, the uh, second uh, scenario. In this uh, case, uh, I, pre I prepared the uh, item uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, idea number 60, 69. The, uh, you can see also here a material type like book. Uh, permanently on type like uh, uh, can uh, circulate, uh, but uh, item uh, status in this case is uh, paged. Uh, this status doesn't allow to uh, to update uh, our status. Uh, so let's uh, let's try to uh, to fulfill update. Let's use uh, our. 
run your profile, run it. In this case, uh, after, after the um, update, uh, we will uh, we will have an error uh, which uh, shows uh, that uh, we cannot cannot update uh, update uh, such kind of item. We can see that the item is discarded. Let's go here. And we can see that uh, we got uh, we got error uh, which shows uh, uh, which shows uh, this uh, statement. Uh, let's uh, let's go to uh, and uh, check our um, our item uh, and uh, let's refresh uh, the page so we can see. Uh, after all, uh, the material type uh, was uh, was updated to text. Uh, permanent layout type was uh, updated to region row, uh, and the item status uh, was paged. Uh, so it is uh, without change. Uh, so uh, that's it uh, for now. Thank you uh, so much for your attention. If you have any question, please uh, put it to uh, the chat or uh, let's discuss it uh, via Slack channel of uh, FolioJet team. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Um, and we're glad that we've caught up on that little piece of tech debt of supporting those um, new statuses properly in import. All right. Um, next is Michal for Prokopovich. Hi, hi everyone. Can you uh, can you see my screen here? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so my my demo will be very short. Um, th this is um, basically the same thing we've uh, we've done already for your inventory, but it's um, it's uh, the Elastic Search integration, um, which we um, added to UI uh, plugin find instance just recently, and I believe this is this work has been done by. Uh, Magda and and the Falcon team originally we just brought it in um, um, to UI inventory and to um, to that plugin find instance. So let me just try to show you how this works. Uh, so um, this is this is the main um, screen here, and as you can see right now, um, we are we have access to um, facets here the same way this works in UI inventory um, and. We are also able to search through different indexes in a very similar way. Um, so this this um, took a, quite a bit of work because um, the plugin find instance is based on search and sort query, not search and sort. So we had to fit that in um, and uh, make a couple adjustments to that original code. But things seem to seem to work well. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much it. From me, thank you. All right, it's good to see Elasticsearch percolating through now. Um, let's see. So last is the quality update from Anton. Um, Anton, are you sharing your slides, or do you want me to share mine? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll share my slides. Uh, okay. Just give me a second. Uh, why don't I see them? Uh, really? Uh, I apologize. Uh, doesn't show me. Okay. It's no reason. I can just share mine and you can okay, tell me when to click. That's fine for the okay. for the speed. Let's do yours. Um, All right, give me just a second. All right, y'all are seeing the presenter slides. Somebody say yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Anne Marie. Uh, no hi, everyone. Just uh, want to update you. Uh, 
what's what's going on and what's being tracked. So QA dashboard that you can find on the wiki just by searching by QA dashboard. Um, uh, so it's a standard uh, wiki page that has been there for many years. So it's um, kind of has a new look and new information. So the next three slides will be what's on the QA dashboard now. So it shows uh, status of our three QA tracks. So the first one is RTL Jest, and you can see the um, what is a, a same information as on the QA dashboard. They, um, uh, as of right now, we completed 33% <clears throat> of all RTL Jest work. And we have 47% uh, scheduled for uh, next release. And we have 30, almost 30% 30 of not scheduled, um, not, uh, not scheduled uh, work, but seven of that is uh, completed. So basically, if we complete what we planned for Lotus, we'll be 77% done, which means it's kind of, uh, well, uh, the expectation was that we'll have a better, um, better coverage uh, by, uh, by that date. Uh, so if you have any chance to grow the coverage, uh, even in addition to what has been planned, that would be greatly appreciated. So Anne-Marie, could you please switch to the next slide? Thank you. So we kind of have a, a much better situation with uh, Karate uh, API integration tests. So uh, for, uh, for Kiwi, uh, it's planned to complete 41% of total work. Uh, and uh, for Lotus is another 27%. And if we do what we plan to do in Lotus, we'll be about 93% done. And uh, those percentages, this 93% Karate Lotus goal, um, this is our QA goal for Lotus release, which is kind of what you guys uh, size estimated. So it's not something that I'm taking you off the wall and just throwing the number there. These numbers are based on what you, uh, what you guys were able to size. So with uh, Karate, we by after Lotus is done, we should be in a very good shape. Uh, and let's talk about last slide, um, which is our end-to-end -end integration test. So uh, as you all know, the uh, unit tests are taking priority. So our RTL just takes priority, therefore, uh, UI and end tests are lower in the pecking order and it reflects in the goals and in the numbers that is not scheduled. So as you can see, by the time we finish Lotus, we should be uh, only 43% done with end-to-end -end tests. And as of right now, 57% of end-to-end -end tests not scheduled. Uh, so again, if you have any chance to uh, add more to the end-to-end, -end, that would be great. But uh, as of right now, for Lotus, we're planning uh, uh, to have 43% of that work done. So these numbers will be updated weekly as you mark any linked issue to uh, closed, then all these numbers will be automatically automatically updated and I will update uh, update uh, QA dashboard uh, weekly because these numbers are generated by um, uh, Power BI and it's not easily linked to um, to wiki page so I will have to do it manually for the time being. That's all I have for today so thanks for listening. Uh, are there any questions? So Anton, are, are we pretty confident that um, most teams have their stories in for the for this work? So uh, we're not yes. missing a lot? 
No, uh, this is all based on the uh, UX Prod features that were groomed by teams in the past two weeks. So the, uh, and uh, those uh, UX Prod uh, tickets, they have linked issues, uh, uh, which is more, uh, uh, more commonly those infamous FAT tickets, uh, folio automation testing tickets. So, uh, so, yeah, the work is there, and the sizing sizing is uh, sizing is done, and it's uh, kind of ready to be uh, added uh, added to sprints. So I just hope we can balance feature work and uh, QA work, and uh, uh, get all the uh, all this uh, UX Pro features uh, done for the Lotus release. We did our best to do uh, pretty diligent planning this time uh, right. compared, to, compared to other releases. All right, thank you. And I, I know for Folijet, we, we've done some rearranging of our karate tests based on um, a couple regre regression bugs that were happening. So we've kind of moved the sequencing to try to get better automated test coverage so that we hopefully will uh, stop having regressions on the Edifact invoices in particular for us. All right, thank you, Anton. And um, now quickly, we're gonna get a ton of time back today. So um, just a reminder, we are right now in Sprint 124. Um, some of us had schema upgrade testing delayed last week. So the um, Juniper environment is ready now if you need to do schema upgrade testing. We have Kiwi releases, um, some that should have happened last week that are happening this week, plus all of the complete and backend and UI for complete um, happening next week. Um, there also are various Juniper hotfixes that some teams are working on. Um, hotfix two has gone out. Hotfix three, there is a dashboard for it now. And if you look at that on JIRA, you'll see um, the various tickets that are candidates for Juniper hotfix. Then Sprint 125 is again a normal two week sprint and we continue ratcheting up the uh, Kiwi work so everything that's been released in 124, um, getting it integrated and ready to go. Um, Kiwi Bugfest, we have the initial environment that is a Juniper environment. It will get migrated to Kiwi as a way to test the migration scripts. Um, as far as getting that ready, we have the environment. Um, we have data, although the, uh, we need to do some looking at the data and maybe some cleaning up. And the product owners are still writing test cases for the new functionality that needs to be tested. So these two sprints are our big prep, prep uh, sprints. And then 126 will start the manual bug fest and clean up of uh, things that have not quite gotten uh, to where they're supposed to be for Kiwi release. So as always in the deck, we have everybody's plans for the coming sprints and they are pretty much what I said. Um, uh, Kiwi finishing up, Lotus planning starting to happen and um, never ending work as always. So thank you very much to everybody who presented and Thank you as always to the product owners and the um, scrum masters and the team leads who come in and help to clean up the deck and get it ready. And I hope everybody has a great afternoon or evening and 23 minutes back to everyone. Thank you.